Okay, um, we're back uh, kind of for part two of our uh, basic enemy movement. Um, in the last video, we got our enemy moving horizontally. Um, and so now we want to also sort of have our enemy able to move vertically as well. Uh, so how can we do that? Um, to start, uh, I'm going to... Um, Well, we're basically going to have uh, our enemy movement. Um, it's essentially the same kind of code here for the X position, or for the Y position as the X position, um, but to temporarily avoid dealing with our uh, enemy moving horizontally as well, I'm going to just comment out this code that's actually updating the enemy's X position. So we're doing all this calculation stuff here, um, but we're not actually going to use it to update the X position. So our enemy shouldn't move if we actually run our game now. Yeah, you see he's just stuck there. Um, all right. So how do we need to move our enemy um, based on uh, the... Uh, vertical position. Well, it's basically the same thing, um, but we want to have our enemy movement amount in pixels here. Um, so actually, I think if I run this now, it should have our enemy moving up and down. Yep, so you see he's moving down. Um, now, uh, yeah, we'll leave that as that for now. Uh, and so we kind of want to have the same bouncing behavior here. Um, and so we're going to need to have very similar code similar to what's going on right here that I've highlighted. So I'm going to check for like the top and bottom of the screen. So if the enemy moved off top side of screen, enemy Y is going to be less than zero, because uh, if you'll recall, zero is the top and Y increases going down. Uh, enemy moved off bottom side of screen. The enemy Y position is greater than uh, the screen height in pixels. And then um, We want to check if the enemy moved off top or bottom side of screen, which would be if the enemy moved off top side of screen or the enemy moved off bottom side of screen. Uh, we're going to do something. So if enemy moved off top or bottom side of screen, then we're going to sort of reflect our velocity to go back in the opposite direction per second times equals minus one. So actually just notice I made a little bit of a typo here. It should be any movement velocity in pixels per second. So we're gonna need to go and make sure that variable name is updated. Okay, um, so now, assuming I wrote this code correctly and didn't make any mistakes, which is why it's important to test, this should work. Oh, something is off here. So what's going on? Ah! <laughs> so that's because this movement amount here um, is being calculated up here. It's not taking into account this logic we wrote uh, for the 
vertical movement. Um, so for now, I'm going to copy this here, uh, but we'll need to make some adjustments going forward. Um, so uh, you see now our enemy is bouncing up and down across the screen. So that's cool. Um, Let's see what happens if we add back in the X movement now, um, which should be interesting to see. Boop. So now you can see our enemy is moving uh, diagonally, sort of automatically, right? Um, now, uh, we kind of... It would be more interesting to have our enemy not just move back and forth like this, but sort of bounce around the screen. Um, so for example, if he goes here, then he could bounce back here, boop, and then he'd bounce back going sort of to the upper right corner a little bit. Um, just sort of bounce around in all sorts of different uh, locations. Um, so, uh, how can we do that? Well, um, to start, we're going to need to have separate uh, velocities in both the x and y directions. And so I'm going to start by going up here and making this the x velocity, um, and then creating a separate uh, variable for the y velocity. Um, I'm just going to initialize it to 100 for now. Um, eh, actually, let's make it uh, 120 just to show something a little bit different here. Um, so, uh, here, where we're doing the x updating of our enemy's position, um, and where we're actually using the velocity here, we're going to need to make sure to change this to the x velocity. And here, um, this movement is going to be specific just to the x, so to make it a little clearer, I'm going to change this to the x movement here. And then we're going to do the same thing for our y here. This is just the y velocity. And this will be just the y movement here. And then now let's see what happens. Boop, boop. So now you can see our enemies just sort of bouncing around a little bit all over the place. Um, now, so the reason I made the uh, different uh, kind of velocity uh, in the X and Y is to give our enemy a little bit more of a varied movement. Um, so... For example, if I were to change this to be consistently 100, um, I think you'll hopefully see what happens. Boop. 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 So if you notice here, the enemy is basically moving in the same constant pattern uh, all the time. It's just bouncing sort of around in the center of these corners here. Um, and actually, let me make the enemies uh, YB0 start just to show you what that looks like. Um, boop. So now, because I had him start here instead of down the center, he's just going back and forth here. So that's a little less interesting, which is why I kind of had uh, the enemy start somewhere else and gave him a different velocity. Um, all right, so now... I mean, this is basically, I think, it for this video. Uh, you can see how the um, enemy is moving around with a little bit more uh, of interesting things. Um, uh, so this is just sort of our standalone uh, enemy. Um, in the uh, next video, uh, we're going to work on actually trying to integrate this into our main game that has the player and collectible. Uh, which will make things be much more interesting. But if you do want to go ahead and try that, um, 
that's what I would recommend uh, doing uh, next, just to start. Um, see if you can do it. All right, that's it for now. Uh, see you.